Bernard Levin, one of the greatest columnists of our generation, wrote these words. Countries like ours, he said, are full of people who have all the material comforts they desire, together with such non-material blessings uh, as a happy family, and yet lead lives of quiet and at times noisy desperation, understanding nothing but the fact that there is a hole inside them, and that however much food and drink they pour into it, however many motor cars and television sets they stuff it with, however many well-balanced children and loyal friends they parade around the edges of it, it aches. It aches. You know, we human beings are strange creatures. It's as if we spend our whole lives searching for something, looking for some magical ingredient or elixir of life uh, that once found will give us the gift of true happiness and well-being. And our hearts, it's as if they're in a, a constant state of restlessness, a bit like butterflies flitting from one flower uh, to the next until they find it. And we fixate. We fix on one thing. We think, if we could just have that one thing, just that one thing, my life would be so much better. What would you say is your deepest need? You know, if you're, if you're single and have been for some time, you might say yeah, it's a relationship, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a husband or wife. Uh, if you're poor, uh, as many of us are, you might say money. You know, if I could just win the lottery, then my life would be so much better. Uh, if you're out of work, you might say employment. If you're sick, you might say health. If you lack influence, you might say power. I'd love to be, you might say, the President of the United States or Tony Blair. But ask the person in a relationship, ask the person with lots of money, ask the person with power and influence, are you truly happy? And I wonder what they would say. I wonder what their response would be. The truth is, the things we go through life attaching great importance to, the things about which we say, if only I had that one thing, I would be content. The truth is, those things aren't enough. Yet, we may be happy for some time, but the human heart is a ravenous beast, and it won't be long before it is hungry again. It's a bit like the British National Health Service. It doesn't matter how much the, the government throws at it. It always swallows it up and cries for more. The Bible puts it like this. It's speaking of God here. You, it says, have put eternity in the heart of man. You have put eternity in the heart of man. In other words, our hearts long for the eternal. They long for the infinite. They long for God. There's a story in the New Testament of an encounter that Jesus had with a woman at a well. Now, the woman uh, was a Samaritan of some, shall we say, reputation in her local area. She'd gone through five husbands, uh, and the man she was living with currently was uh, not her husband. And Jesus himself was, was tired and uh, thirsty, and he had sat down uh, by a well at high noon, presumably in the hope that someone would come along who would be able to draw him some water uh, and give him something to drink to slake his thirst. Enter the woman of ill repute. The conversation somewhat unsurprisingly turns to the subject of water. What is surprising, however, is what Jesus says next. A bit out of the blue, if you like. He says this, If only you knew the gift God has for you, and who I am, you would ask me, he says, and I would give you living water. Living water. He goes on to say, people soon become thirsty after drinking this water, the water from the well. But the water I give them takes away their thirst altogether. It becomes a perpetual spring in them, welling up to eternal life. Jesus is drawing an analogy here, a parallel between liquid refreshment and this woman's uh, series of relationships.
What is that parallel? Well, water satisfies for a moment, but we soon become thirsty again. And this woman's relationships satisfy her for a time, but soon they begin to lose their luminosity. And so she writes, Dear John, I think it's about time we moved on. What is it in these relationships that she finds so elusive? What is it in these men that she sees that so quickly vanishes? Is it perhaps the beauty and the love of the infinite and eternal God that each and every one of us deep down longs for? Into all of this, you know, Jesus speaks with great compassion and love and he says this, if only you knew the gift God has for you and who I am, you would ask me and I would give you living water and it will satisfy you forever. You know, our deepest need is not for the latest gadget or toy like my nice new video camera here. It's not for the love of a beautiful woman. It's not to win the national lottery. It's not even for anti-aging wrinkle cream, believe it or not. Our deepest need is for the love and the intimate knowledge of the God who made us and sent his son Jesus to die for us.